My name is Logan Parks, and I'm here to tell you guys about our million dollar tournament win. So it started back when Tucker Smith's dad texted me and Tucker asking us if we wanted to fish the last chance qualifier for the Bass Pro Shops US Open. And the last chance qualifier was on Bull Shoals in Arkansas. Tucker and I had already committed to fishing a college event the Sunday before. We actually finished third in that tournament and we drove 17 hours from Lake Wiley to Arkansas. We had about a day and a half of practice on Arkansas, so we committed to fishing offshore. Um, we knew that the fish would be deep on bait that time of year. That's just something that they're typically doing, so that's what we looked for. Um, we ended up finding some pretty good areas that we thought we could catch some fish, and uh, so we were ready for the tournament. Um, the tournament rolled around, we caught a little bit over 14 pounds and we were lucky enough to finish 13th place at that event and qualify. And, but we didn't have much time to prepare for the championship. The championship was Friday, Saturday, Sunday. The last chance qualifier was on Wednesday. So we got half a day of practice on Thursday to figure them out for the biggest tournament either of us had ever fished. So we try to pattern our fish the same way that we did at Bull Shoals, looking deep. And we weren't really too successful at first. We looked in a lot of creeks and we didn't see much bait action. So we started looking in the, on the main lake. We actually saw some birds out there that kind of clued us in on some key areas to look. Uh, we were catching our fish deeper than I've ever fished before in my life. I think the boat was sitting in 150 foot of water at some of these places. but. We felt good about what we found. We actually didn't make a cast in practice. We graphed the entire time um, because we knew we just needed to find as many productive areas as possible. Everyone else that hadn't qualified at Bull Shoals had been there practicing for a week. So we knew that we were a little bit behind the eight ball and we just needed to cover as much water as we could. And so that's what we did. So the first day began, uh, we got a really late boat number. There was 350 boats in the tournament and we were boat 300 and like 20 something. Um, and I think that actually worked out in our favor because there was a big fog delay. It was really, really cold that morning. I think we had about a two and a half hour fog delay actually. So we ended up sitting around and waiting for a while and having that late boat number gave us a lot of time on the water to try and figure things out. Because we only had half a day of practice, we kind of treated day one like another day of practice and we just kind of went fishing. And we fished hard, it took all day, but uh, we ended up catching a decent limit for like 13 and a half pounds. I didn't really know what to expect because like I said, we haven't had a lot of time out there on the water to know what these guys are catching or what, you know, what lives out there. And, I thought, you know, we'd be pretty far back, but we're actually sitting in 10th place after, uh, after day one. So day two, we kind of had a better idea of what to look for. Um, Obviously it was a little bit tougher than we were expecting. We were thinking 13 pounds wasn't gonna have us sitting very well. And so we knew if we could just catch another 13 pounds, we'd be fishing on day three. Um, they cut the field to 50 boats on day three and everybody's weights were zeroed. So it was anybody's ball game on day three. So we just went out and tried to fish and get that 13 pounds and we actually caught it pretty quickly. I think we had 13 pounds by about 10.30 in the morning. We just went and looked for the rest of the day to try to find some new water for the final day of the tournament. So literally a month ago, we uh, were just debating getting in the tournament and here we are fishing for a million bucks on the last day. Um, I think we were nervous to say the least. Um, but we really didn't let it get to us too bad. We just treated it like another day of fishing and went out there with the goal of having fun because if you're not having fun, you're doing it wrong. And uh, man, something crazy happened. So 
So day three started out pretty slow, a lot slower than we had anticipated. Um, we're actually starting to get a little bit down on ourselves because it was 10 o'clock and we only had one or two small fish at that point. Our bite was really dependent on the wind and the wind had just started to pick up around 10.30. And that's when we rode by a place that we hadn't fished all practice uh, or in the tournament, just a new place. There was birds diving everywhere all over it, which is a good indicator that there's active bait fish and active fish um, under that bait, pushing that bait to the surface. So we pulled up, put our trolling motor in the water and pointed our forward facing sonar over there. And man, there, it just lit up like a Christmas tree. There was bait everywhere and there was just blimps under the bait they were just big bass and probably within 30 minutes man we caught 15 pounds which was a bigger bag than anything we'd caught all in practice or in the tournament so we were pretty excited uh just to have that it was like bam 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 fish after another we probably caught 10 to 12 i mean we were culling and by the time you cold a fish, I'd have to get the net for Tucker. And then by the time he cold, he'd have to get the net for me. It was lights out for literally 30 minutes. And one of the last fish that we caught during that little flurry was a, uh, I caught a four pound smallmouth and something that never ever happens happened. I thought it was actually a smaller fish because uh, it was running straight to the boat. And when it got to the boat, it dug really hard. Luckily, I was able to loosen my drag and let it run. Otherwise, it probably would have broke me off. But when we got it up to the boat and netted it, it had actually almost completely straightened my hook out. And somehow, it still was hooked. We still got it in the net. Yes, sir. Championship Sunday, that's what you want. <laughs> so we knew that uh, we had a good bag. Um, but we had an idea of what the guys were catching, you know, some of the bigger bags were up there in the 16, 17 pound range of the tournament so far. So our goal was to try and catch 17 pounds because that's what we thought was gonna, it was gonna take to win. We had about 15 pounds from 11 until uh, about two o'clock. And we were about a 30 minute boat ride from the ramp. So we had about 30 minutes to fish we decided let's just go back to that place we caught them this morning and see if they're back. And we pulled up and they were there. Our camera guy actually made the comment that we were just waiting until the end of the day to make something happen. And we told him, yeah, it's gonna happen, you know, and, but jokingly not really expecting what was about to happen to actually happen. So we pulled up, we put our trolling motor in the water and they were there again. There was no birds, but there was just a big ball of bait and there was like five or six really big fish sitting under the ball. Tucker fired out there and he caught one um, and it jumped out of the water and we were like, oh my God, get the net. It was, it was like a three and, three and a quarter pound spotted bass. And oh yeah. <laughs> I'll catch the spots if you catch the smallmouth. All right, fair trade. 313. And with about five minutes of fishing time left, I made the, the perfect cast, watched my bait fall through the bait ball, and watched this big fish on the graph just come up and engulf it. And I set the hook and I was like, Tucker, this could be the one, dude, get the net. It came up and jumped and he was like, oh my God, get that fish over here. So I got it up beside the boat, we netted it, and we just kind of went crazy. I, I put it on the scale and I saw the scale said 16 something. And I was like, Tucker, we, we might actually have a chance at winning this tournament. And uh, he was like, yeah. We probably need to go in because we didn't really want to push it. We knew we had a good bag. We kind of just Let's hugged go. it out for a minute and uh, decided to pull the trolling motor up and head in to see what our fate was. Woo! So we headed into weigh in, not really knowing what to expect. We knew that there was definitely yes, probably some guys that were saving some big fish in some key areas for the final day that just kind of did what we did and just caught enough to get by. And it was a pretty good sign when we got back to the ramp that all of the pros that were there wanted to come talk to us. And that was when I really thought that, wow, we might have actually done it, Tucker. And all of these guys were doing these phone interviews of us, talking to us, and I honestly, got so just torn up about it. I almost almost threw up. I literally went to the bathroom and like, <laughs> yeah, throw up. had to splash some water in my face to just make sure I wasn't dreaming because I was like just so nervous. Um, there was 50 boats 
and they wanted to make the weigh-in like super exciting for TV, which was awesome because we got to weigh in last. We put our fish in a mesh bag and they came by with like a little hand scale, an unofficial scale, and they weighed all of our bags and they wrote the weights down. So they knew exactly what we had and they staggered us in order. And so they saved the, the top six for last. So they sent us all up there at once. We just got in a random order right before weighing in the in the bump tank line. We were third in line. Tucker and I just got in third. That's just, we all walked up there and got in a random order. And they came by and asked us our boat numbers. They looked at the sheet that they wrote our weights down on and they told us to get behind the guys that were behind us. So we moved to fourth and we were like, wow, like, oh my gosh, this is crazy. Like we, we definitely, we knew we had a better bag than those guys that had moved in front of us. And then they asked the guys behind us again, their boat number. And they said, all right, move in front of Tucker and Logan again. And so we were like, oh my gosh. And they asked the guys that were last in line what they had, what their boat number was. And they said, okay, you guys are good. And we were like, that, that was really when my heart kind of sank because we knew they were trying to stage us in order of the biggest bags. And when they told the guys behind us that they were good, I was like, dang, we're gonna finish second. And, uh, but, you know, I knew there might still be a chance uh, because it was an unofficial scale that they used. So we, we went, up, went up on stage, um, second to last. We weighed in 16, I think 1641, something like that. We took the lead and uh, the moment came, you know, they asked, they asked me, they were like, you guys are this close to winning a million bucks. You want to roll them through? And I was like, roll them through. Let's see who's going to win this thing. So they brought the last team up and uh, they held their fish out, put them on the way in stage. And they were like, you need 1642 to take the lead. And 1618. Not quite. Whoa. Right here, Alabama. Buddy. Come on, one million dollars. Man, that million was just the greatest dollars. feeling on, in the world that, that we had actually pulled it off. Stay Everyone went crazy as we picked up these big US Open trophies. Just seeing our parents, our girlfriends, just crying, going crazy. The whole crowd just stood up and just gave us a standing ovation. It was, it was insane. Woo! It's been a dream of mine ever since I was a little kid to fish professionally. It's all I've ever wanted to do and it's really all that I'm good at and that tournament win has changed my life forever. I know it's changed Tucker's too, and uh, we couldn't be more appreciative of Mr. Johnny Morris and Bass Pro Shops for helping make dreams come true. So I'm gonna be posting a lot more frequently on YouTube. I wanna give my followers uh, a view of what the life is like trying to make it as a professional angler. And if you wanna follow along, subscribe to my YouTube channel. Thanks guys.